Alrighty guys, welcome back to the shop. In today's video, we're going to go over how you can turn any 2x72 grinder into a grinder that can flip back and forth between the vertical and horizontal position. The inspiration for this build comes from Mr. Peter Burke's Instagram page. I saw that he built a frame for his 2x72, which allows him to switch from the vertical to horizontal position. As y'all will see throughout the build, I took his original design and added some tweaks here and there so that it would be more convenient to be used in a smaller space. The first step in the build process is going to be constructing a frame for your grinder. I don't add any dimensions here because every grinder will have a slightly different footprint and the frame that you produce will have to be custom. To make this frame, I'm using mostly one and a half by one and a half square tubing with an eighth of an inch wall thickness. On the cross members, I use an inch by an inch square tubing. To tack this thing together, I'm using my Hobart handler in the MIG setting with some CO2 argon gas. I will mention that I was running a little low on the gas, so don't judge my welds too bad. They're not the prettiest things in the world, uh, but the metal got stuck together and this frame is structurally sound. So once I had the frame constructed, I wanted to test this guy out. So I bolted my grinder to the frame and then I did some test rotations. And this kind of illustrates the reason why I went farther with this project so that I can have a nice smooth rotation in a tight space. It is a little bit uh, precarious to try to flip this grinder in a small space with this frame alone. Also note that with the frame alone and a very heavy attachment like the surface grinding attachment, this whole system got slightly unstable and would tip forward. If you're super cheap, you could actually just bolt this frame down or clamp it down to the work table so that this thing is not gonna tip on you. And that's actually what I did on the surface grinding attachment update video that I put out last week, just so I can test the surface grinder in the horizontal position. All of that being said, for a fairly small amount of dollars, I think that we can do better. Here I was cutting out some quarter inch plate that will be attached to the frame as a backing plate for my hinge when my bandsaw blade decided to give out on me. People ask about the bandsaw blades I use frequently. These are the ones that I use. They seem to work fairly well. I cut through a bunch of knife steel with them, G10 and wood and all kinds of stuff. So they seem like a pretty good general purpose blade. This is probably not the safest thing to do, but I normally ride these blades out until they die, as y'all just saw. Normally before they die, they'll start getting pretty erratic running in your bandsaw and you have a good indication that they're about to go. So once I get these plates cut off, I put them on the end of my frame and realize that I will not be able to access these quarter 20 bolts once I have everything welded together. So I took those bolts out and marked where I will need to cut some windows in order to access the bolts. These quarter inch plates will end up being the backing plates for the weldable hinges that we will be welding onto this frame. Once we have the backing plates welded onto the frame, we can cut out the windows for our grinder mounting hardware, which will attach the grinder onto the frame. In order to make the flip from vertical to horizontal more compact in a small area, and to have a direct connection to the table at all times, I was able to find a cheap set of rails on Amazon for under $35 that can be used to attach these hinges to and attach our frame to. Whenever you're ordering an imported item like this, I like to unbox it completely and make sure I have all the pieces. In this case, I did get all the pieces with my order and I also ordered 50 stainless steel M5 by 16 millimeter cap head screws so that we can attach some plates to these rails. I was fairly impressed at the low price of these rails coming in at around $35 and the fairly low price of the socket head cap screws coming in at around $9. So I'll put affiliate links in the description below if anyone's interested in doing this project. So what y'all just saw me do there was the time tested Indiana Jones tracing method of laying down a piece of paper over the blocks that will ride on the rail and then tracing them with a pencil so that I can center punch holes into the plate that will be riding on top of those blocks. Once I have all eight of these hole locations center punched, I will drill those holes to a diameter that is large enough for the cab head screws to fit through. 
I don't remember the exact hole size, but I did pick a numbered bit that has around 20 thousandths in play over the diameter of the cap head screw. With all of the holes completed, I use a countersink to clean up the edges of each one of these holes and then take these plates over to the belt grinder to round over the edges so that I don't have any burrs on the edges and also no sharp corners. Next, we will be taking these plates over to the blocks on the rails and making sure everything lines up. In my case, everything did line up. And the next step is taking these plates on the blocks with the rails over to the grinding stand and putting them under the frame, getting everything nice and mocked up so that we can weld on our hinges. I was able to find these nice and robust weldable bullet hinges locally at a welding supply shop. However, they're also easily available online for a fairly reasonable price. So this part of the welding project can be a little bit finicky. I took a lot of time to lay out these rails under the frame and make sure that everything is nice and square and running true. I also used some plate steel here as spacers so that the frame does not contact the screws, the cap head screws that are connecting the plate onto the blocks. Once I have the hinges tacked onto the plate that holds them to the blocks and also tacked on to the frame on the other side, I take the entire grinder and frame assembly off of the table, off of the rails, and then screw these rails onto my grinding stand. Now that the rails are screwed down to the stand, I'll put the entire frame and grinder assembly back onto the rails. I would advise taking this whole thing apart to do this step, but I can be hard-headed at times and I tried doing the whole thing at once. I was successful, but it was definitely touch and go at a couple points of that lift. So this is the first time that the flipping mechanism is all put together. So you can see me here kind of testing it out. But in order to make this guy a little bit more safe, a little bit more user friendly, and a little bit more sophisticated, we're gonna be adding some stops to the rails as well as these U-shaped toggles or clamps so that we can clamp this guy down in both the vertical and the horizontal position nice and securely. To mount the toggle clamps, I just drilled some eighth of an inch holes into our crossbar here and use some self-tapping screws on all four of the screw locations. We'll also be building some pillars for both the horizontal and the vertical position. These pillars will be at different heights and the height of the pillar will also depend on the level of the floor of your workshop. For instance, the floor in my garage slopes towards the driveway. So in order for the grinder to be level, I will have to change the level of these pillars so that it is not level with the top of the table. That wasn't my best explanation ever, but basically just know that user preference will come into play here on how level you want your grinder to be in the location that you are mounting it in your workshop. Now that the pillars are made, we will be mounting the catches onto the pillars for our toggle clamp, getting everything lined up, marking off where the holes will need to be drilled into our table, and then drilling some pilot holes and screwing the pillars into our grinding stand. I'm just using some basic woodworking screws here uh, that I got from the big box store and they seem to do just fine with attaching these pillars on to the grinding stand. These toggle clamps are advertised at being able to pull 1,100 pounds of force, so you may want to be a little careful when adjusting the shackles so that they don't pull the threads out on the screws that you use to attach the catch onto the pillars. I'm assuming that those screws are not going to be able to withstand 1,100 pounds of force. So take a little bit of time and get those adjusted correctly. The last piece that we will be welding on here will be an indexer or a stop on each of the pillars. This will allow us to bring the entire assembly to the same spot every time when we are flipping between the vertical and horizontal position. While it may not be necessary, I do think that this little component makes the entire assembly a little nicer to use. Now that all the major pieces have been constructed, we will take the grinder off of the frame, take the frame off of the rails, take all the pieces apart, prime all the pieces, and then paint them. 
I think this will add a nice touch to your grinder, but if you want to leave it bare steel, at this point you have an operational system. As a last touch, we will be installing some stops onto the rails so that the entire assembly cannot go sliding off the rails and onto the floor. Before explaining how to make these stops, I would like to backtrack a little bit and mention that these bullet hinges were installed in opposing orientations so that the entire grinding assembly cannot slide off the hinges towards the front or the back of your grinding stand. The rail stops that we are fabricating here are going to be made out of scrap pieces of micarta and G10. I will drill and tap a hole for M5 threads, the same threads as our cap head screws, into the ends of these rails. I will then drill a hole in each one of the square pieces of micarta or G10 and then screw them into the end of the rail. This will stop the blocks from coming off of the end of the rail. While these stops are not 100% necessary for the flipping mechanism to work, I would highly recommend installing some stops onto your rails to prevent the entire grinder from sliding onto the floor by accident one day. So now that we have our safety stops installed, everything fabricated and painted, we're gonna move on to our final assembly. The first thing I will do will be to screw these pillars into the grinding stand. I will then rest the frame along with the hinges and plates on these pillars on the blocks and get the holes in the plates lined up with the blocks. Using the cordless impact driver, we will screw in these cap head screws into the blocks on one side, flip the entire mechanism to the other side, and screw in the remaining eight total screws on the other side. Lastly, we will clamp the frame down, place the grinder on top of the frame, and then bolt the grinder onto the frame. At this point, the only thing left to do is to test it out. For the first time you're flipping this guy around, I would suggest not having any attachments in the grinder so it's as light as possible, just so you can get a feel of where you want to grab on this thing and how it feels to flip this thing from the front and from the back. It's really not that bad, but you just need to take your time the first couple times that you use it. So while y'all are watching this finished product in action here, I wanted to throw out a huge thank you to all the subscribers out there getting this channel up to 40,000 subs. It's a major accomplishment for the channel and I have all of you guys to thank for it. So much appreciated for all you guys subscribing, commenting, and liking on the videos. If you have any suggestions for future videos or some things that you'd really like to see in the future, please don't hesitate to drop it in the comment section below. I still make sure to answer every comment that is put on my videos. So with that, thank you guys, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.